Over the past few videos on special relativity, we've seen a number of effects like time dilation and length contraction and, and the relativity of simultaneity that basically show us how different observers will see things like clocks running differently or disagree on what's happening simul simultaneously. So this may lead us to the question of, well, is there anything that all observers are going to agree on? And the answer is most definitely yes. So to look at a number of these things, we're going to look at, uh, compare the just spatial, uh, spatial picture, which we might be more familiar with, to a, a space-time picture. So let's say I, I just have, you know, some coordinate, some 2D spatial coordinate. So I have a, a y-axis and I have an x-axis, and I want to measure the distance between two points. So I want to measure this distance, and we'll call this delta L. Well, if I know how far I move in the uh, in the x direction, delta x, and I know how far I move in the y direction, delta y, then I can very easily use Pythagoras' theorem to say delta L squared equals delta x squared plus delta y squared. So, fairly straightforward. Now, if I look in space-time, the picture becomes a little bit different. So I have, let's say I have a spatial axis and I have a C times time axis. And I want to know the distance between, let's say, these two points. And I'm gonna call this delta S, just to know what we're talking about, a slightly different thing. And these are two events in space time. They're at a particular point in space and at a particular moment in time, and we, we refer to these as events. So we see that I've, I've moved a certain distance delta x, and I've moved a certain distance delta t, or, or, uh, or c delta t. So how do I calculate this delta s? It's not going to be the, exactly the same as this. What we find is that delta s squared is going to equal negative c delta t squared plus delta x squared. And if I had uh, if I had more spatial dimensions, it would just be plus delta y squared plus delta z squared and, and go on like that in this sort of fashion. But when we deal with this time coordinate, we have this extra negative sign out here, this, this minus sign out here. And that will change how we measure this distance. And this actually corresponds to, uh, this actually corresponds to if I had an observer mo moving straight along this line, that would be the proper time that that observer measures, the time according to their clocks between this point and this point. So this somewhat corresponds to the, the proper time of an observer moving along this line. And the interesting thing is, all observers will agree on this on this value for delta s. The different the distance between two points in space time, uh, as measured this way, is going to be what we call invariant. All observers are going to get the same value for it. So this suggests that uh, we might have a new way of tracking the motion of particles in in. In normal spatial uh, dimensions, say I have a x-axis and a y-axis, and I have some particle, some particle that's moving. Well, I might parameterize this curve by saying this is the point at t equals zero. This is where it is at t equals one. This is where it is at t equals two. And I, I write this as an equation as my position as a function of time. And if I take, if I uh, take a derivative of this with respect to time, I'll get velocity. And from there, I can define, I can get a nice definition of momentum. And you know, we we know that momentum is conserved, so that's our definition of momentum. And we'll also get 
you know, we can we can use this sort of framework to develop a concept of energy. So in in normal Newtonian physics, the kinetic energy is just one half mv squared. But this time coordinate, different observers are going to uh, are going to interpret this time coordinate differently, because that would be like using this time to parameterize our curve. And if I change frames of reference, then we come into uh, time dilation issues, we come into simultaneity issues, and this doesn't work. And we'll find that these definitions of energy and momentum, if I look at if I say energy and momentum as defined this way are conserved in some, say, two particles collide or something. In one frame of reference, this energy and momentum can be conserved. But in general, if I change frames of reference, these definitions no longer work. So uh, different observers will say, no, this momentum and this energy were not conserved. Uh, so this, this doesn't work. This doesn't work in our in our framework of of special relativity. But let's look in the in the uh, in the special relativity case. So here we have x, and here we have t, and I want to describe you know some particles' trajectory. Well, instead of using this time little t, I might want to use the proper time, what's known as the proper time of this particle. If I attach a clock to this particle and it moves around, it's going to undergo time dilation, but all observers are going to be able to agree on where in space time, uh, we'll say that this symbol tau is, uh, is the proper time or, the, or the, this clock's time. So proper time. And we're going to use this coordinate to say where in space time is this object. So we're going to have t as a function of this proper time, and we're going to have x as a function of this proper time. So if I go to the full, uh, full three spatial and one time dimension uh, framework, I'm going to have four coordinates that describe where I am in space time that describe uh, each point along this curve, and which point I'm looking at is determined by the time according to this moving clock. Now, this picture is quite a bit different than, than this picture over here, and it leads to a different version of, of velocity. Instead of having, having this velocity, we have what's referred to as the four velocity. which is, which is going to be a little bit different. And this gives us a different version of momentum. Instead of momentum being mass times this velocity, we're going to say it's mass times this four velocity. And we find that our modified version of momentum, there's going to be two parts to it. There's going to be an x part of the momentum, and that's going to equal gamma m times gamma, which is uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So it's just this kind of uh, funny value that we find coming in a number of places in, in the length contraction and the, uh, and the time dilation formulas. We see this square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is our momentum in the x direction. And our momentum in the time direction is going to be gamma m c. And we call this energy over over c. So why do we call that energy why do we call this energy? Well, if e over c equals gamma m c, then I can take this c up here and gamma I'm going to draw this, write this a little bigger. Gamma equals 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. If this particle is at rest 
with respect to me. If velocity is zero, then my energy, my rest energy is just going to be the famous mc squared. This gamma is going to go to one and, and we're going to get, you know, just E equals mc squared. If I'm slowly moving, so if, if, uh, here, let me, let me uh, switch this up a bit. If I write gamma is approximately equal to one when we're at rest, and when it's going slowly, I can do a Taylor expansion, and that's just, uh, a Taylor expansion is just, what does this equation look like if this v squared over c squared is very small? If that's very small, this is going to look almost like uh, v squared over 2c squared. So when, when velocities are very small, this is almost correct. And then there's, you know, more correction terms. So if we're stopped, gamma is 1 and we get mc squared. If it's moving just a little bit, we add on this uh, v squared over 2c squared. So v squared over 2c squared times mass times c squared, times mass times c squared. These c squareds cancel out. And look what we get. When we're moving slowly, we're going to get 1 half. We're going to get 1 half mv squared, which is the energy in for Newton's formulas. But when we're going very quickly, where this fails, where conservation of, uh, of momentum and conservation of energy fail in different frames of reference, the, this simple correction will, uh, will actually give us a version of uh, a concept of energy and momentum which is conserved. And I might go through, a, go through a brief video on that showing some more of the math, but we see that we get our very famous equation, probably the most famous equation in the world, E equals mc squared. And if we're moving a little bit, then we get the kinetic energy uh, according to Newton, and then if we were going even faster, we'd get higher and higher order correction terms. But this is the concept of, uh, of momentum and energy that works in special relativity and is how we originally get that famous equation E equals mc squared.